The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Verde Valley, Arizona on your new fire apparatus, job number 33851. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start at the front bumper. Just under the front bumper you'll find two open-ended tow hooks. Moving on to the face of the bumper, passenger and driver side, you'll find dual air horns. Located directly in the center on the bumper face, you'll find your PA speaker and siren. Moving to the driver's side, you'll find your mechanical siren on the bumper face. Let's move up now to the bumper extension area where you'll find a tubbed storage location, swivel discharge inside, dry deck material, and also Velcro hold downs. Let's move back up onto the cab itself. You'll find a marker light and turn indicator. Just inside of that location, you'll find the headlight structure housing the low and high beam headlight. The high beam is on the inside. Moving up from that location, you'll find two forward facing emergency warning lights on the driver and passenger side. And moving to the outer edge, you'll find your mirrors housing a flat and convexed mirror. Let's move to the brow, which is across the very top. You'll find five running lights. And then moving further inside of that location, you'll find two forward facing floodlights. Let's move up onto the roof itself where you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the items that we just talked about. This is that tubbed storage location, your front bumper extension, swivel discharge, dry deck material. Moving up to the headlight structure, marker and turn indicator. Let's move up to the brow itself. You'll see the forward facing brow lights and also the forward facing flood and emergency warning light. Let's move to the side of the vehicle. This is just past the driver's entrance. You'll find shoreline inlet. This is a 20 amp plug. You'll also find midship sufficient grab handles for going aloft. There's also a warning label here regarding entanglement because to the left you'll find your cross lays. As we move further down, we'll start in the upper left hand corner with a warning label here regarding not riding on the side of the apparatus while it's in motion. And then we'll now move to this red module and identify your Husky foam system. First, there are some operating instructions in the uh, module itself. As we move to the left, you'll find the system on off switch. And then moving down, you'll find a digital readout indicating the foam percentage. Moving further down to make any adjustments to that percentage, you'll simply increase or decrease. Those are the two gray buttons. And then as we move to the right, you'll find the prime button, which is in the yellow. There are some instructions here regarding system status lights. If you look to operating instructions number four and identify the system status light. Also to the right, you'll find foam system instructions. And then further to the right, you'll find your foam level, an LED readout for the amount of foam in your tank. Let's move to the gray module. This is gonna be your master intake on the left-hand side. To the right, you'll find your master discharge gauge. In between the two of those, you'll find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged. Let's go ahead and move just to the right, same gray module area. This is gonna be your Pierce pressure throttle governor. If illuminated, it would be a check engine light would be yellow. Located in the center, you'll find a digital readout for the RPM. And then to the right, if illuminated, you'll find a stop engine, which would be red. As we move down to the next set of menu functions, you'll find on the left, the orange menu button allows you to scroll through the various menu functions. You'll also find diagnostic information here regarding your engine. And then to the right, you'll find a red silence button, which will allow you to silence the audible alarm. Moving down to the left, you have two opportunities, either pressure or RPM. So those are the two modes you can select, pressure mode or throttle mode. In the center, you'll find a digital readout. And to the right, you'll find a throttle ready, which would be indicating in green. Just beneath that, you'll find a green preset button, which will allow you to uh, gain access to presets. And then as we look down to the very bottom, you'll find turn to the right on the wheel will increase the throttle, turn to the left will decrease, and push in the very center for idle. You'll also find an audible alarm. It's on the very far right-hand side of this same gray module area. It does have an outer edge bezel that is adjustable to dampen the volume of that sound. 
Let's move to the right. If your pump is properly engaged, you'll get an indicator light pump OK. And you'll also find you have some panel lights, driver side body floodlights, and also passenger side body floodlights. There are two future switch locations above and below the top of the current switches. If any of those switches are indicated in the on position, you'll find the green indicator will illuminate. Let's now take a look at the Pierce Minimum Operation Maintenance Schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left-hand side of the placard, you'll find the GPM, and on the right-hand side, you'll find the associated RPM, a governed speed of 2,130. Let's take a look now. You've got a variety of different discharges here. They're all color-coded and also labeled. There are a set of three on the left-hand side. You'll also find some on the right-hand side. First, your front discharge, cross lays, and then your deluge and two and a half. Down the lower section, you'll find your number one, number two, and number three discharges. Those are two and a halves. Moving down, you'll find a wheel which controls your large diameter passenger side discharge. Up in the very top corner, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line, and just beneath that, you'll find the tank to pump. As we move upward from this location, you'll find your water level tank indicator. This is an LED readout indicating the amount of water in your water tank. To the right, you'll find your engine cooler. That is a twist, not a pull. And then further down, you'll find your pump primer. There are also instructions on utilizing the pump primer that it should be at least 1,000 RPMs for best practices. As we move down to the right, you'll find your main pump drain. And then further to the right, you'll find the manual pump shift. Let's take a look over to the left-hand side, the Pierce American Flag Eagle large diameter pump intake. And then as we move further down, you'll find this warning label that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after receiving proper training. Down in the lower left, you're going to find the driver's side auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch female inlet. And then a watchress placard indicating the type of pump. We'll go over that in just a moment. Down at the very bottom, you'll find your foam functions for draft, foam, and fill tank. And then to the right, you're going to find two pan doors. We'll talk about the contents behind those in just a moment. I would like to point out this warning label that you should only utilize foam that is the same brand, type, and consistency for the purposes of foam failure using something else may cause that failure. As we move down to the left, you'll find all your associated color-coded and labeled discharge drains. And then as we move just slightly to the right, we're going to find that watchress placard. You do have a capacity of 1,500 GPM. Just underneath the running board, you'll find your foam pump discharge and also your foam pump intake drain. As we move back to those pan doors, you'll find some instructions on the left-hand side of that door indicating what this yellow handle is indicating for foam fill operations. There is also a twist for your foam drain and I've got a little bit closer image here of the next um, more in focus so you can see exactly what it is. The yellow handle is for foam operations and the top is your foam drain. Let's go ahead and move to the very top of the truck into the dunnage area where you'll find your master stream device. We do also have some warning labels here on this individual device regarding the uh, location of your nozzle position. Also down you'll find a do not move your apparatus if this has been extended. That's what that electrical connection is for. As we move just to the rear section, you'll find the uh, hydraulic foam reservoir for your Husky 3 foam system. This will be the fill location for that reservoir. As we look to the very rear section of the dunnage area, now onto the body, you're going to find your water fill. This is the top fill location. And then also your foam tank fill for foam A. There is a warning label on that uh, foam A tank. It does pertain to foam failure. We did talk about that a few minutes ago. That's regarding not mixing different brands or consistencies or concentrates of foam. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cab section. You'll find at the very top, this is a non-walking surface, and that's why we have these warning labels here for slip hazard. And then as we move to the rear of the apparatus, you're going to find four compartments here. These are your hatch compartments. You'll also find these yellow diamonds indicating the walking edge or surface near the edge for firefighter safety. Let's go ahead and take a look in some of the compartments now. And now we'll go to the exterior of the vehicle where you'll find your logo Verde Valley Fire District and also at the very rear you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's take a look at the side of the apparatus. You'll find a marker light just in front of the rear axle. 
You'll also find two Pandoras on this side. We'll identify the contents in those in just a moment. And then a side facing emergency warning light directly over the rear axle. Let's take a look at the first compartment. This is going to house a bottle storage location for your SCBAs. Then as we move to the rear section, just to the rear of the axle, you'll find a single slot for bottle storage with a retaining strap, ultra low sulfur diesel, which is your silver cap, 4.5 US gallon DEF, which is the blue cap. As we move to the very first compartment here past the pump panel, you'll find at the very top left side of this image, when plugged into shore power, your automatic battery charger system will activate. Let's move to the midsection where you'll find a tool board. The D handles allow you to gain access to the uh, inside area. When it's in the full open position, it will lock in position. There is a release just on the hinge side. Let's move down to the rear compartment where you'll find a bottom tray. This tray does have a release mechanism where the arrow is indicating. Just underneath, you'll find your folding wheel chalk in front of and also in rear of the rear axle. And as we look to the rear of the apparatus, you'll find emergency warning lights, brake, turn, and a backup light. You'll also find fold down steps on the left hand side or driver's side. And you'll also find a switch which will control your hose bed lights. We'll just uh, talk about those in just a minute. There are some warning labels here regarding not riding on the back of the apparatus and also fall injury. As we move upward, you'll find your reverse camera or backup camera. And you'll also find two lights in the upper left hand and right hand corner. These are your rear scene lights. Some close-ups of the images that we just talked about next. First, let's start with the hose bed lights. This is the switch for that. It's going to be on the driver's side. As we look to the very top, you'll find two panels here, one in the upper left-hand corner, which will uh, store all of your long extension drafting hoses, and then down to the D handle, which will store your ladders. As we move down to the bottom roll-up compartment, LED lighting inside. Let's move up from this location just above the camera is where you'll find a 24-foot extension ladder, a 14 roof. You also have locations for long handle tool storage and located in the very center a 10-foot folding ladder. Let's take a look back up to the left-hand side of this image is where you'll find, once again, your backup camera. And then all the way up to the far left-hand side, which would be the driver's side, this is the storage location for your two drafting tubes. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the passenger side. Pretty much the same configuration and layout. First, let's start with the rear compartment with a pull-out tray. The release mechanism is on the right, adjustable shelving, LED lighting. As we move to the rear axle area, you'll find SCBA bottle storage with retaining straps for two bottles and also an oxygen bottle location. Directly over the center, you're going to find a D-handled toolbar storage location. And then just in front of that rear axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage also. As we move to the forward compartment, you're going to find a refrigerator. You can see it's currently at 65 degrees. There's also a locking mechanism on the right for a code to gain access inside. Let's go ahead and now move to the midsection where you'll find once again sufficient grab handles to go aloft. You'll also find on the very far right hand side your pre-connected hoses. There are two located here. Just beneath that you're going to find a warning label regarding entanglement hazard. That's because of those cross lays coming out. Moving downward you're going to find two access doors. Let's take a look at those first before we do. There are some warning labels here. Fall hazard and then also pressure hazard. Because of caps that may be under pressure, be cautious when removing those caps. As we look inside, you'll find sufficient access to gain access into the pump panel area. That's what these two locations are for. As we move down the Pierce logo, American flag, and eagle, large diameter pump intake. Just to the right, you'll find the green large diameter discharge. To the right, you'll find a two and a half inch discharge. And then as we move further down, you'll find a two and a half inch female auxiliary inlet for the passenger side. Just in front of that, you're going to find all your associated color-coded and labeled drains. Here's a close-up of those drains that we just talked about. And then uh, once we move from the drains, uh, there is another module in the same area right near the two and a half inch, and that's going to be your cab lift. There are cab lift instructions for raising and lower, and then also a large here for lower and raising of that cab. 
As we move down, this is a close-up of the passenger side auxiliary inlet. Once again, points of entry for the cab. For personnel, you have grab handles at each points of entry for firefighters. The latches for the doors do have keyed locks. And then also, just in front of that, you're going to find your air intake. As you move down to the very bottom, you'll find Alcoa wheels, Goodyear tires. In the very center, you'll find a sight gauge for the axle hub. Here is your logo. Let's go ahead and move inside now of the cab in the very rear section. At all points of entry, you'll find a set of warning labels and danger hazard labels located on each door panel. Above the top, you'll find window electronic controls, and then you'll also find your release mechanism and lock for each door. Let's move now just inside to the very center location. Just above the Pandora, you'll find USB style charging 12 volt access. And then also just beneath that, you'll find your access to the rear section of your engine for the firefighters or engineers daily checks for oil and transmission. In the rear of the cab, you'll find two forward facing seats on the rear wall. And then you'll also find LED flashlights just below those seats that are the fold down style seat. Underneath you'll find sufficient storage on the cab riser for your seats and then you'll also find your heating and air conditioning overhead. From this position let's go ahead and move over to the officer's side. This will be the passenger front compartment. Once again, point of entry, so we're going to have those warning labels affixed to the door panel. Your vehicle also has at the very top the locking mechanism and release mechanism for your door lock. And then to the very far right, you'll find electric window controls. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, an airbag. It's located here where it says SRS. Just above that, you'll find a glove box and grab handle. Let's go ahead and move down to the floor area where you'll find a foot pedal for your mechanical siren control. And then we'll go ahead and move back up to the very top section for a close up of a few items. This is the glove box area. To the right you'll also find your window washer fill location. And then as we move to the left you'll find the push to talk button for your radio system. Just forward of that location you'll find USB 12 volt access and then also the vehicle data recorder port. Let's go ahead and look overhead from the officer's seat. Uh, looking up, you're gonna find push on and off white and red lights, but you'll also find this red light located in the very center. This is an indication, do not move your vehicle. You may have a compartment or door open. As we move to the right, you'll find your uh, weather band radio and also CD player. Moving just to the left, you'll find a set of switches here. These are memory switches indicating front flood, driver side cab flood, passenger side cab flood, the red siren brake, driver and passenger side body floodlights. You also have the ability to turn off the music through this switch. And then moving to the left, you'll find the control module for your intercom system. Let's go ahead and move further to the left where you'll find your siren and PA speaker system. Just beneath that you'll find the climate control for defrost and heat and also your air conditioning. Moving now just to the left from that position you're going to find your unit communication radio. And then as we move back overhead just a general view you'll find pull horns located on lanyards located on the passenger and driver side. We're back now to the driver's area, point of entry, so we have warning labels affixed to that cab panel. You'll also find some warning labels here on the seat regarding seat belts, and then also some additional information. Down in the lower right-hand corner, you'll find your auto charge system. When plugged into shore power, it will activate. Here are those warning labels that we've talked about earlier. They're affixed to all points of entry. Close up of the auto charge system. Once again, when plugged in, this will activate. As we move down to the left step area, you'll find your air inlet chuck. There is also a LED light here for the step well. Moving up onto the entry of the door, you'll find the mechanical siren foot pedal. And on about the right ankle of the operator, you'll find this yellow placard. This is manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing. It has the date of manufacture, the job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, and all of the fluid capacities for your vehicle. 
Let's move to the left knee of the operator where you'll find your master battery switch on and off. You'll also find the region inhibit and also ABS diagnostic information. To the right, you're gonna find three ports. First, your engine transmission and ABS diagnostic port, a display port, and then also a tech module port. Down in the lower left, you'll find your DPF region and engine diagnostic switches. Just up from this location, we're gonna find window controls. These are for the electric cab windows for all four. You'll also find window control on the actual door itself, along with a lock and latch and grab handle on the door panel. Let's move now to the uh, steering console area where you'll find your steering wheel. Once again, your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system. You do have an airbag in your steering wheel. There are also regular horn controls on the steering wheel itself. Let's take a look at the dash starting on the left with your transmission, oil, DEF level, and water temperature. On the right, you'll find the volts, fuel, front and rear air. Located in the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information will display above and below the speedometer. Let's move to the left-hand side of the dash where you'll find your hazard lights, the start switch and ignition switch just beneath that. And then as we move to the right, you'll find a small switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. It's located here. This will turn on all of your emergency lights or turn off the emergency lights. To the right, you'll find your headlight and parking lights. And then to the right, you'll find a switch which will allow you to brighten or dim the panel lights within your dash area. Let's move to the opposite side of the steering column where you're going to find your OK to engage the high idle indicator and switch. And then as we move overhead of the operator, you're going to find this yellow placard indicating your height 10 feet 9 inches, length 31 feet 11.38 inches, gross vehicle weight rating 48,500 pounds. If you make any changes to your vehicle, please update this placard. Let's move to the right to the next set of memory switches. Um, once again, if these switches are engaged, they will illuminate the outer edge. First starting on the left with the emergency master, roof light, front warning, and side warning lights. Moving down, you'll find lower rear warning, upper rear warning, and high beam flash, and a future switch location on the far right. Into the next set of switch panels, you'll find the brake for your mechanical siren and also a load manager. To the right, you're going to find some more light controls, front flood, driver's side cab flood, passenger side cab flood, your rear scene lights, driver's side body flood, passenger side body flood, and also the perimeter lights which are underneath the vehicle. Your vehicle is also equipped with the Pierce Command Zone, a tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. Please see your owner's manual for more information. Just beneath that, you'll find the Allison Digital Transmission Pad with an indication to pump and drive. You'll also find at the very top your pump shift. Let's go over a few items on the left-hand side. You'll find two green indicators. You have instructions for road to pump and then also from pump to road. Just remember to exit the cab for pump operations. You'll need the pump engaged and OK to pump green indicators for pump operations. Let's move down from this location where you'll find your engine brake on and off switch. And you can see the indication here for pump in drive. You'll also find a caution label here regarding disengaging the retarder when vehicle is on wet or slippery surfaces. You do have the ability to control that engine brake for settings of low, medium, or high. And then to the far right, you'll find a mirror heat switch. Let's go ahead and look around the cab here. A couple close-ups. First transmission pad here, digital readout, once again with an indication to pump and drive. You'll also find your radio push to talk and also your mirror controls. And then in just a quick look to the very rear, you'll find the two outside folding seats and then the two seats nestled close together. Congratulations, Verde Valley, Arizona, on your new fire apparatus, job number 33851. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.